Hello, welcome to Seasons Cleaning. I am Shana Von K, your cleaning lady. And today we are diving into our mini bench series that we started last time. And we are gonna be hitting on day three and day four. Day one is how to disinfect your home, which I think is super important, especially because when we launched this series, it was back in March, and we were just hearing about corona, we were just getting small cases, and unfortunately, that is not the case anymore. So this episode, I think, is probably one of the best episodes that should be aired now we are going to dive into day three which is how to disinfect your home so if you have anyone who has been sick or anyone in your home who is sick this is a really good one to kind of help keep the germs from spreading and also anytime someone is sick in the home this is a really good video and it is on our youtube channel to go back and watch just to kind of hit some pointers on really how to stop the spread in your home especially if you have more than one person living there so we'll go ahead and get started because there's a lot to cover and I'm not gonna ramble here, I'm gonna ramble on the video. So here we go. Hello, welcome back. It is day three of our mini binge cleaning series. So I actually started making this video a while back. I was making a how to clean your house after someone has had the flu or a sickness. It was flu season and that was relevant. And now that the coronavirus is in the forefront, as I was making the video, things were just different. It wasn't the same. It felt like I needed to go into more details and focus on all viruses and not so much cleaning, but more of getting into the disinfecting side of it, especially with this coronavirus going around. I'm gonna say sick, but what I mean by that is flu, stomach virus, coronavirus. We're gonna kind of group them all into one. It's all pretty much the same type of cleaning and disinfecting. However, with the coronavirus, you might want to go over the top, especially if you have someone in your home and it being super, super contagious. And we just don't know a lot about it, but I'm not going to get into that because that's not my expertise. Mine's cleaning, so we'll stick there. So how to clean your home after someone's been sick, while somebody is sick, and to prevent germs and viruses from coming into the house to keep everyone from getting sick. tip this is not necessary but this is just something that I usually do but I usually put my hair up when I clean and I wear usually form-fitting clothes so I don't have to worry about shirts falling off or my hair in my face especially if, if you have someone in your house who has the coronavirus and you're going to clean and you're like trying to move your hair out of your face then you're wiping it and you could be exposing it to yourself so pull that hair up put it in a bun Put some form-fitting clothes on, whatever you have. Don't forget to wear gloves. That is so important. And hopefully you have gloves. If you don't have gloves, no problem. Just keep washing your hands and avoid your face. When I clean my houses, I usually do where I do a level and then another level and then the main level. I will work from the kitchen, leaving a little bathroom towards end so I can use it and clean it before I leave. But all of this is different because we are disinfecting for a sickness. So what I'm going to suggest is, if you have someone who is sick, say in this room over here and a bathroom over here, what you wanna do is clean all of the other areas first. You wanna go with your cleanest areas first and then clean the area that has been the most contaminated so that you're not cross-contaminating with cleaning. I hope that makes sense. Is this necessary? No, but is this a suggestion just for me? Yes, I think that you, if, I, I do switch towels for every room, but if you're grabbing the trash from this room and then you carry it like I do and kind of just have one trash in the middle of the house while you're cleaning everything up, you don't really wanna bring any of accidental contamination of those rooms. So clean the other ones first, then hit that room, and then change your clothes, wash your hands, take a shower, and hope that you got everything. Where to start? You know, I don't know if it necessarily matters where you start, but I'm gonna give my opinion on where I would start and why. 
but I would start with first opening all of the windows and doors and get some airflow going in your house. Then I would go to the trash. Now if somebody has been sick, I would take all of their trash, take it and put it outside first and leave that trash can outside for a while. And then if you can clean outside and clean your trash can there, I would suggest doing that. But weather is a factor, so just leave it outside for a while, let it kind of rest before you go and attack it. After you've removed a lot of the trash, tr uh, water bottles by nightstands or Kleenexes, things like that, then I would get all of the dishes and go and take them to the sink, maybe fill them up with hot water and or go ahead and do the dishes right then and there and get that dishwasher going if you have a dishwasher. So I like to start typically in the bedroom with taking all of the sheets and bedding and starting those through the wash so that they can be washing and you can be switching the cycles as you're doing the rest of the cleaning the rest of the day. Now a thing I like to do is keep two sets of sheets so that when you're stripping one sheet you can go ahead right after you're done and put on the second pair of sheets while the other ones are washing and it just saves having to come back later that night put the sheets on and I like a made bed. But if you do not have a second pair of sheets, then yes, this is a great place to start because you want to wash your sheets, let them cycle through and come back and get them on sooner than later. And when you're doing all of your laundry, you want it on the hottest of hot cycles that you can get it on. And a lot of washers actually have a sanitized cycle. And you're also going to want to take all of your bedding, blankets, pillows, everything. And if someone's been sick, you need to clean all of these as well. Also, you can take the time to, at this point, clean your mattresses and your couches. And on your mattresses, there is a way to clean them. I'm not going to get into it today with this video. You see me briefly vacuuming it, um, lay baking soda all over the mattress and let that sit as long as possible. Just let it sit until you're ready to put those clean sheets back on and then you just vacuum all that baking soda up. We can clean this way more extensive, but we're not gonna do that today. You also want to get all of your clothes picked up, especially if you've had someone be sick. If you have rugs, you wanna get those picked up. You also want to grab blankets, throw pillows, throw blankets all over on the couch, your room, bedroom, all of that. And the couch, kind of same thing, um, you want to vacuum that down and then you can spray it with Lysol, or you can take it and individually grab the alcohol spray or your disinfectant spray and work spot on spot. I'm not getting into the deep cleaning of it, um, but if you do have any questions, just comment below, I'd love to help you. And any carpet and spots, if any, any bodily fluids were to get on the floor or the carpets, you're gonna wanna clean those up too, especially with little kids who can't really help themselves. So you do want to get all of that up and right away. Frequently touched surfaces. What you want to do is get all of your light switches and the area around. Sometimes when you're going to turn a light switch off, you're in the dark or shoot in the dark and you're missed. So you want to actually get around the wall too. Then you want to do your doorknobs going into the house, out of the house, bathroom, bedrooms, every doorknob that gets touched handrails for the stairs all of those need to be disinfected you want to grab your chairs if you're going and sitting down for dinner you're pulling the chairs in and out tabletops and surfaces appliance handles and appliances but especially the handles and knobs drawers and cabinets in all of the rooms especially where things are that you frequently go to like silverware or your nightstand uh, cabinet door, uh, handles and drawers to where your toothbrushes are, things like that. Electronics, I do have a video, which is day two, how to disinfect your electronics. So go check that out, I'll put it down below, and it goes through how to do it, and it's super satisfying because you can see the difference. And another thing is your floors. Your floors are gonna see a lot if you're sneezing, coughing, everything falls to the floor, so Give your floor some loving. And in the kitchen, you want to also clean your countertops and surfaces. And then you want to clean your kitchen sink and the faucet and handles and kind of all around because water does splatter. And a tip, use the non-abrasive side of your sponge so you do not scratch it. 
Then I'm gonna focus in on really hitting the handle. That's what your hand is gonna touch most of the time. That spot is very, very important. With the kitchen fridge, you wanna get the handles, not just around the handles, but you wanna actually grab the handles and go back and forth on them. See how I'm getting back behind? That's where your little fingers are touching. If you're disinfecting your kids' toys, you can do that in the dishwasher. It's perfect. Just throw them all in there. Just make sure that it's not electronic, something that has batteries. You don't want to ruin anything. And if they have teddy bears and blankets and things like that, you could push those through the laundry. And of course, your bathroom sink, you'll definitely want to give that a once over and hit some of the items you have around your faucet as well because you can splatter as you're brushing your teeth. Let this sit there and disinfect. We want to hit our soap dispensers because we will be handling those a lot. So make sure you give those a nice little once over. And your bathroom handle and light switches to your lamps. I have one right by my nightstand. Coffee table. On your coffee table, you want to wipe that down, remove any glasses that you may have used. Your remote especially needs to get hit. Other things to think about would be like your garage and a garage door opener, your entry, putting your purse down and your keys down, which you could, at this point in time with the coronavirus going on, you can clean your keys and your purses, give them a wipe down because you set them up and move them around. So we go ahead and hit those two. Um, take your shoes off at the door. Don't let family members take their shoes and walk throughout the house. Try to keep everything set at the front of the house. And um, also your thermometer, you wanna disinfect that every time you use it so that no other family member goes to grab it and then now they're sick too. With a toothbrush, you can go ahead and put it into um, a disinfectant of your choice. Right now I'd say go ahead for the rubbing alcohol. I typically do hydrogen peroxide. I tend to throw mine out and hand everybody out new toothbrushes. I take the old brushes and I throw them through the wash with my cleaning towels. So mine end up going into my cleaning caddies for cleaning houses. But don't forget, if you use it to clean, you need to clean that toothbrush first. Cold and flu medicine or pain relievers that have been used by anyone that's been sick. Don't forget to clean your car, the handles, the steering wheel, things like that as well. Don't forget your jewelry, your rings, wedding bands, watches. I would suggest making sure you plug up the hole of the drain so if you are doing it anywhere near a sink, you don't drop it down the drain. I believe I've hit everything, but there's a good chance I'm missing something. And if I am missing something, will you please comment below that I can add it to the list that I'm putting in the description of places to clean. So if somebody is sick, typically we do try to just stay away from them, but if you have someone who has got the coronavirus in your house and you need to keep them quarantined, you do want to go to a little bit more extreme with this to protect you and everybody else and your family members from get, getting that from whoever that loved one is that is quarantined into an area. And if you have the ability to have a bathroom designated just for that person, especially if they have the coronavirus, I would suggest leaving them to their own area. Now, if you have small children, I know moms, dads, we can't just leave our children to take care of themselves. So I do urge you to make sure that you are washing your hands and that you are going in there and helping them and keeping it disinfected for them, but also protect yourself because you can't help your uh, little babies if you're not feeling good either. If you only have one restroom and you're all using it, you do need to clean that bathroom every time that person who has been sick has entered that bathroom. If they can do it themselves, great. They should just hang on to a disinfectant bottle on their own. But if they can't, you do want to hit it every time. You also want to keep their trash can. Give them their own setup trash can. Usually we do this anyway, just especially if you have a, a, a stomach virus. But keep them their own trash can. Give them a place to put all of their Kleenexes and all of any of the trash that they might use while they're in their room being sick. Keep them their clothes separate from the other laundry. If you have someone who's sick and you grab their laundry and you go and you add it into the others, just to be safe, 
especially with the coronavirus, just do it separately. Wait till they're done, give them a place to just keep putting their clothes if they're changing, and then grab those clothes up and do a separate load there. And here's a thought, for some of you who do not have a washer and dryer in your house, maybe you're in an apartment and you have to go down to the basement, if you can, great, but if you are stuck to a place where you can't actually do any of your cleaning and laundry, then I would suggest putting it all into a big trash bag and leaving it outside or in a closet that you won't be going back into and keeping it quarantined out in another area until the time comes that you can leave your house to actually go and tackle that project. If you have children and they have their toys, you ne definitely want to take the time to disinfect a lot of the toys they've been playing with. If you have a kid that is sick, I would suggest removing all of the toys and giving them a select bin of toys that they can play with so that you know which ones are getting touched and you don't have to go through and keep cleaning every toy and you can just rotate the bin out with new toys every other day and disinfect those while they're playing with those so they don't get bored. Because everybody's situation is different, if it's you who is sick, if it's a family member that is sick, if it's a small child that is sick, if it's um, an elderly parent who is sick, everyone's situation is different. So what I'm gonna advise here is that you just think through where they have been um, try to keep them in their own area, try to keep them a little bit quarantined. I know that can be hard, especially if you have a small one who needs you. Um, but think through where they've been and then just follow that trail and clean up everything. I mean, you won't go wrong by overdoing it. So my suggestion is, if you're gonna continue checking someone's temperature, to take the cap, if it's not been used and it's already clean, and put it somewhere else, you don't need it until it's ready to go back after being disinfected and go back to its rightfully home in the medicine cabinet. What we wanna do, every time they use it, they just keep it back in here. They come in, they wipe it off, they use it, they put it back. Also, what you can do is have this little spot here. Keep a little bit of a rag here, so anytime they use the bathroom and they need to, they can just wipe off anything and go right back to bed. they say who said. I do not know much about these two things, but if you can do your research, if you have a steam cleaner at your house, that might be perfect for cleaning your couches and your rugs and a lot of different items inside your house. But I don't know a lot about that, but I just wanted to put that out there for you. Because if you do, go and do the research and oh, you know, let me know too. I'd like to know. And also they say UV light. I don't know a lot of us who have that in our house, but if you do, go research on how to use that as well. Okay, you guys, that was like really serious. And it is serious, but I seriously don't wanna be that serious. So I am going to lighten it up a little bit by asking you a couple questions. I wanna ask you, if you had to pick one of these items, two week, month, or however long this ends up lasting for you, only got to pick one, what TV show would it be? What movie would you choose? What game would you choose if you only had one board game? And what snacky food? You have all your essentials, but if you had like one snacky food and that was it, what would your four be? That's a wrap on this day. Now I gotta go because I'm trying to get some more videos out for you and I have a lot of work ahead of me. I hope you guys are all staying home and staying safe and staying positive and having fun. Try to have fun. Subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to ring the bell. The bell basically just lets you notify your phone. It'll pop up and let you know that a video has been uploaded. And uh, you definitely want to stick around for the other videos that are coming out. They're all pretty exciting. To me, anyway. All right, see you next time. Nailed it, finally! Yep. Yep. Woo! We're gonna start with the kitchen. Why? Because I don't know where else to start. It's very confusing to me. Uh, messy. Okay, we're rolling. Actually, really made it look like someone's been sick. Yeah, that's more like it. <laughs> Next thing I wanna talk about, actually it's gonna say sick, sickos. No, that's not what it's gonna say. And then we are gonna have um, laundry and upholstery. Pull your pants, 
legs up. So there is that. And then Jack. No cats were harmed in the making of this video. I don't know what I want to say. I just felt like I wanted to, to, to you know, right. not be so serious. People are like, who doesn't have a dishwasher? Um, we don't, we do, but we don't use it. So there's that. It gets really tangly. He's not happy with me. I'm trying to show them. If you don't want me to show them, get out of the film. <laughs> anyway. All right, well that was day three and I think it's super relevant right now. So I'm very glad that it gets to be in the lineup. And at the time when we made it back in March, it wasn't necessarily probably the number one there. It was actually day four, which we are about to show you. And that is how to make um, hand sanitizer and disinfectant wipes. So we went ahead and did that. At, and so I will show you that, but I will say this. I used some very cheap paper towels. And so my suggestion after we finished this, uh, that video and put it out and we've been using the wipes, they're gone now. But when we were, the paper towels were a little bit, uh, they were tearing off a little bit. So what I would suggest is go with a very high quality paper towel if you were making wipes. So that is what I learned and I did not get it in the first video, but that's why this one, this time, gets a chance to uh, make it a little bit better, if you will. So we will jump into how to make those in this video now. Oh, hello! Welcome back to day four of our mini binge cleaning series during this corona time. Today, I'm gonna show you how to make disinfectant wipes and hand sanitizer. I know you've probably been seeing these everywhere, but you've never seen me make it before, so stick around, because that's next. Hand sanitizer. What you will need is aloe vera gel, rubbing alcohol, essential oil, and a dispenser to put it in. I want to point out, wash your hands. is the most important thing you should be doing. Hand sanitizer is great if you can't get to a sink with soap, but wash your hands first and foremost. Very important, do not substitute this. This should be your first choice. First, you'll take 3 fourths cups of alcohol and 2 thirds cup of aloe vera gel. Then you're gonna add 10 to 20 drops of essential oil. I'm using tea tree, but you can use whatever essential oil you prefer. I will put a list of disinfecting ones below. Stir it up and then pour it in. And I take a black Sharpie and write hand sanitizer so you know what is in there. Here I just wanted to give a quick demonstration on how to use hand sanitizer. You actually pour a lot in there, probably more than I poured, and then you rub it all in until it's completely dry. Now I like to use lotion after I've used hand sanitizer to keep my hands from drying out. I do this after I clean everyone's home. You at home who have all the kids at home, they're all out of school, maybe it's a fun thing to do with them. You could even have them make it, science project, and decorate it, art project. Let me know below what you and your family are doing to pass the time, or what I like to say in my house, bonding time! Disinfectant wipes. What you will need is towel, rubbing alcohol, essential oil, Dawn, a dispenser, and water, and a knife. I forgot to mention in the beginning of the video, but I've actually never made any of these products before. I buy them in the store, but that is not the case this time, so we are improvising. I struggled with this knife and I thought maybe it would be easier to use a bread cutter so I did switch it but I really don't know which one would be best. You decide. I think I liked the smooth one better. The bread knife teared it up a little bit. Oh look! Toilet paper! Now that comes in handy. Then you take the paper towel and just put it into the container. You can use baby wipe containers. You can use any container that you can fit the paper towels in. You can use your disinfectant cleaner of choice and pour it in. However, I'm going to use my handmade version, which is 1 4 cup water and 1 4 cup alcohol. Then 2 to 3 teaspoons of Dawn dish soap. 
and about 10 to 20 drops of essential oil. I'm using tea tree, but you can use your favorite. Then you stir it on up. Then you take your solution and you pour it in over your paper towels and just kind of spread it around there. I use very cheap paper towels, so I didn't use all of my solution. But if you've got a nice big thick paper towel and you're using the good ones, you can go ahead and be very generous with your solution. Give it a little shake back and forth so it can fall to the bottom. Then you take out the roll, which was harder than it looked, but I got it. I added a little bit more because I noticed that it wasn't completely soaked. You want them to be all over, but not too much that it's falling apart. Look at that, you guys. We have disinfectant wipes. You can pull right up from the middle. Ooh, ah, so fresh, so clean. Thank you so much for watching today. I will be back again soon. So don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell because we don't know when that will be. Thank you so much for watching and I hope that helped. I loved making those videos and I love that I get to show them again because I feel like they're really important. And at the time, I don't think we really had a chance to grasp what we were doing because we were so busy making them. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you next week. And you can check us out everywhere else. We have Seasons Cleanings on our YouTube channel. And we also are on Facebook and TikTok and Instagram. We're all over, but we're mostly here, so stay tuned to next time.